Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we um, are going to be completing uh, molar mass conversions. So last class we talked about what molar mass is, and we're going to do a little bit of a review. I highly suggest, highly suggest that you get one of these devices right here, this little periodic table, right? It's going to come in very handy. So we'll use it today when solving these problems. So what I want to do is let's just review what molar mass is. So the molar mass is the mass of one mole, okay? The mass of one mole. Mass of one mole of what? Mass of one mole of one of these elements. For example, if you want one mole of hydrogen, we can't visualize that, but if you wanted to have that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you want to have a bunch of them. It's like asking for a dozen donuts. If you wanted to have a mole of that, it would weigh only 1.01 grams of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen. Iron, on the other hand, which you can visualize, iron is the stuff we build houses out of, the sinks in your house, parts of your computer. Iron has a molar mass. There are 55.84 grams of iron. Symbol for iron is Fe. 55.84 grams of iron for every one mole of iron. And yes, I get to abbreviate the word mole. I can abbreviate it like this and save a lot of time. Okay, so this whole unit right here is called the molar mass. The units are grams and moles. In theory, what we've learned before is I can also say that one mole of iron is 55.84 grams of iron. So it doesn't matter how we say this, okay? It's, oops, how we say this, it's still gonna be a conversion factor for us. This one is the molar mass because molar mass is given by definition grams per mole or grams for every mole. Just like you'd be doing miles per hour or gallons of gas per whatever. All right, so let's review molar mass. So what's the mass of water? Well, hydrogens, ladies and gentlemen, there's hydrogen in this and there is oxygen in this one here. Each hydrogen weighs 1.01, each oxygen weighs 16. So H2O will have two hydrogens. And so two hydrogens equals 2.02. .02. How did I get that? Well, 1.01 and then another 1.01 would give you 2.02 .02 plus one oxygen because there's one oxygen and that weighs 16. And if I wanna know the total mass of H2O, I would add all this together, two hydrogens plus one oxygen will yield 18.02. 18.02 what? 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. So if you have 18 grams, which would be about 30 pennies, 35 pennies, that's how much that water would weigh. If you had 18 grams of water, that would be one mole of water, all right? And one mole is that number 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. This one's, I'll put this one in blue. This one's iron three nitrate. We can see right here, there's the iron. And then it's made up of a nitrogen and oxygen. So what do we have? Well, we have one iron and one iron equals 55.84 grams for every mole, okay? And then how many nitrogens? There's a three right here, and that three means three of everything in here. There's three nitrogens, so that's gonna be three nitrogens, which is gonna equal three times 14.01, which is gonna equal 42.03. Okay, is that right? 14 and 14 is 28, 14 is 42, yes. And then the last one, you wanna see how many oxygens do we have? Well, we have three oxygens on the NO3, but then there's three of those, which is gonna give us nine. So we have nine oxygens, which equals 
9 times 16, 9 times 10, no, 9, is that right? Yeah, 3, 3, 9, yeah. 9 times 10 equals 90, 9 times 6 equals 54, 90 plus 54 equals 144. Do I have to do the math on that? Is that right? 9 times 6, 54, I should probably delete that. Let me. I have to double check my math, kids. Let me take out my calculator. I'm pretty sure I'm correct. I don't want to make a mistake. Nine times 16 equals 144. Perfect. So that equals 144. And now we just have to add all of these together. So let's add them together. So the answer, if I add all those together, is going to be 241.8 eight, seven grams of iron three nitrate for every one mole of iron three nitrate, okay? So that is how we get the molar mass. So this right here would be our molar mass. Okay, so that's our review. Now we're gonna start with the activity for today. So today we are gonna be doing conversion factors again. We've started this previously. So I'm gonna work out um, some examples. So we have to read it. It says there are five pencils in each case. So we have five pencils in each case. How many pencils, we're looking for pencils, are in seven cases? So let's work that thing out very quickly. What are we looking for? I always suggest that you start right here. What are we looking for? It says how many pencils? So we're looking for pencils. What are we starting with? We're starting with seven cases because we're asked to find how many pencils are in seven cases? So we're converting seven cases into pencils. And now this is where you really need to understand what's happening. We need to, ladies and gentlemen, get rid of the word cases and put in the word pencils, which means what word is gonna go right here in the numerator? What word has to go in the numerator right here on the top? That's right, pencils has to go up there. And what word has to go down here on the bottom, on the numerator? Yes, cases. And the reason is so that the words can all cancel out. So let me take you over there and let's write that in. We know our conversion factor, right? Because we read the question is gonna be right here. There are five pencils in every one case, or you could say every one case has five pencils. And it doesn't matter how we write it because it's just a conversion factor. So which one are we gonna use? Are we gonna use example A or example B? Which one of those are we gonna put in the conversion factor? That's right, we're gonna use example A. We're gonna put example A in the conversion factor. So that's gonna be right here. It's gonna say five pencils for every one case of pencils, right? What's gonna happen? The word cases are gonna cancel, which means those words don't exist anymore because anything divided by itself equals one, that leaves us with the word pencils. We always multiply across and divide on the bottom. So seven times five equals 35, divided by one equals 35. So the answer would be 35 pencils but you probably already knew that. If you can work this out easily, then the rest of our, our problems are gonna be very straightforward, okay? So let me get the next part set up for you. I'm only gonna do two examples today. I might do three, but I'm only set up for two examples because every example is exactly the same. And if you're confused, I want you to come back and look at question number seven or come back and go look at this question number eight that's right down here, okay? So the question says, if you have 25 grams of water, so we have 25 grams of water, how many moles do we have? So we're looking for moles. So I told you, always write down, and this is something that we should do. Number one, I'll write it again. You have this from previously. Number one, write word, that we're looking for in the problem. Step two, write the word that we're starting with, okay? 
So what would that be? Well, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for moles of water. So I'm gonna write in moles and me, I'll always, oopsie daisy. Oopsie daisy, let's try that again. Moles of water, what are we starting with? 25.00 grams, let me take that off, of water. Okay, now let's just look at the question. You don't even have to know chemistry, right? Because my question right now is, what word, ladies and gentlemen, needs to go right here on the bottom, ladies and gentlemen? What word needs to go on the bottom? That's right, grams needs to go on the bottom. And what word needs to go on the top, ladies and gentlemen? What word needs to go on the top? Yes, that's right, moles needs to go on the top, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put those in. You know that has to go on the bottom. So you need grams to go on the bottom, grams of water, H2, whoopsies, H2O. What's gonna go on the top? Moles of H2O. Now, we need numbers that go here. So we need a conversion factor. Does anyone know, and I will ask this question. Oh goodness, don't, don't do that. Oh geez. No, I'm not canceling, I'm not exporting anything. Who knows the name of a conversion factor, ladies and gentlemen? Who knows the name of a conversion factor that has grams and moles in it? If you're not sure, let me just quickly cruise up here to the top. Does anyone know a conversion factor that has the units grams and moles in it? All right. That's right, kids, molar mass. So we need to find the molar mass of water. How do you do that? Well, we already know the molar mass of water, but I'll do it again. So there's our water and we look up hydrogen and what's the mass of hydrogen? right? Hydrogen has a mass of 1.01, .01, right? So we have to look up the mass of, of water. So we have that, which is 2.02. .02. And then we need oxygen, which is 16. So the molar mass is 18.02 grams per mole for water. And you have to include that grams per mole every time. So once we figure that out, right, we know that there are 18.02 grams for every mole. So the question is, are we gonna put the number 18.02 on the top or the number 18.02 .02 on the bottom? Where will I put my number 18.02? .02? Will I put it on the top or will I put it on the bottom of this conversion factor? That's right, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. How come? Because it's 18.02 .02 grams for every mole. It's not 18.02 .02 moles for every gram. So I'll put 18.02 .02 here on the bottom for every one mole. And at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, we're finished with the problem because we know that grams of water, and this is why I write grams of water, it's gonna cancel with grams of water. Now, some kids, they're gonna just shortcut it and just use the word gram. And I can't stop you because I'm not there doing it with you. But the problem is eventually, we're gonna be working with three, four, five different chemicals at a time. And you can only cancel grams of water with grams of water. So if this said grams of carbon, they could not cancel. Grams of carbon will only cancel with grams of carbon. So let's take a look at how we're gonna solve this problem. So we're gonna put in, 25 times one equals, divided by 18.02 .02 equals, and our number is, I'll, I'll write the number down and then I'll tell you what we're gonna keep. The number is 1.38735. I'm always gonna want you to keep, if you can, three numbers after the decimal place. So in this point, our answer is gonna be 
three, eight, seven. Now, some of you are going to struggle with rounding. You don't know how to round yet. We haven't learned that yet in our lives. And so I'm going to have to, some of you have learned how to round. I'm going to have to do a little mini lesson to teach us how to round, but I'm not going to waste everyone's time for that because a lot of kids already know how to round. So the answer here would be 1.387 moles of water. Okay, if you have any questions, please re-watch what I just did, all right? Let's go to the next question. But before we do, let me just show you, this question just asked us for how many moles, all right? Next question is gonna ask us for how many grams, okay? I'm gonna pull that one up. I'm actually gonna delete this so that we can, um, oops, I wanna solve both of these questions at the same time, okay? So you can see right above the other, all right? Now this one at the top, number seven, gives you water grams and asks for water in moles. This one down here says you have 2.5 moles of sugar and we're looking for how much grams, all right? So let's just quickly work this one out, all right? First thing I ask you to do is write down what you're looking for. What are you looking for in this question? That's right, you're looking for grams of sugar. C, six, H, 12, O, six. And I'm just gonna quickly go in here and do that it's a little bit faster. All right. So we're looking for grams of sugar. What are we given? What are we given? We're given 2.5 moles of sugar, right? We're given 2.5 moles, oops, moles of sugar. So what word do I want to cancel out in this question? What word do I wanna get rid of, okay? What word am I gonna put down here at the bottom of my conversion factor? Good, I'm gonna put moles down at the bottom. And what word do I wanna put at the top of my conversion factor? That's right, I wanna put grams up there, ladies and gentlemen. So, here we go. Without even knowing what to do. Well, we know what to do. So the question is, do we know a conversion factor that has grams and moles in it? Do we know a conversion factor that has the words grams and moles? Yes, we do. And it's called molar mass. So whenever you see grams per mole or moles per gram, that's gonna be molar mass. And so how do you find the molar mass? You add up everything that's in there. So let's add up everything that's in um, this right here and in this sugar molecule. All right, so let's figure out the molar mass of this compound, all right? So what is the molar mass of this compound? Well, we're working with carbon, we're working with hydrogen, and we're working with oxygen. So we have six carbons, each carbon weighs 12, so that's gonna be six times 12.01, which equals 72.06. And then we have to work with hydrogens. We have 12 hydrogens, each one coming in at 1.01, 1.01, which equals 12.12. And then we have oxygen coming in at 16, and we have six of those, six times uh, 16, which equals 96. We're gonna add all this up and it's gonna weigh 180.18 grams per mole of C6H12O6, okay? Getting right out there. So what do I do with that? Well, I'm gonna put this conversion factor, the 180 grams per mole, which is also known as the molar mass. This is the molar mass 
It's the mass of one mole. Notice the mass per one mole, the molar mass, the mass of one mole, the weight or heaviness of one mole. Right? It's just something you're going to have to say it over and over again until you kind of clicks in there. So my question, am I going to put the 180, okay? Am I going to put the number 180 up on the top? Or am I going to put the 180 down on the bottom? Well, I put the, the, the grams, the 180 grams on the top of this conversion factor, the numerator, or the bottom of this conversion factor. That's right. I'm going to put the 180 grams on the top of the conversion factor. Why? Well, because we want grams to cancel and we want mole, I mean, we want grams to go across and we want moles to cancel. So for every one mole, let me just copy this to save myself some time. I encourage you guys to do the same thing. For every one mole of sugar, I will have 180.18 grams of sugar. And that is our conversion factor. Notice the moles are going to cancel. The moles of sugar are going to cancel. Let me do that again. Because remember, it can't just be moles. It has to be moles of sugar cancels with the moles of sugar, leaving us just the word grams. Let me take out my tr trusty calculator. I'm going to put this in. I don't even know if you guys can see me. I'm sure you can. But it's going to be um, 2.5, 2.5 times 180.18, right? So 2.5 times 180.18 divided by 1. And that answer is going to be 450.40. So I'll type it in here. 450 point four five it says okay mr pepe you said three numbers but it doesn't have three numbers after the decimal pin so that would be our answer again in this case we are converting moles into grams and we only know one thing that converts moles to grams and that's molar mass in this case here we're converting grams to moles and there's only one number that we know and that's molar mass now, the conversion factor on this first example was inside of the question, okay? It was in the question, five pencils in each case. And that will be the last time that that happens, okay? From here on out, you're gonna have to create your own conversion factors from the periodic table. Water is 18.02. There's the oxygen, there's the hydrogen, okay? You're gonna have to go to the periodic table to find, whoops, the molar mass, okay? So if you have the periodic table with you, it's gonna be so much easier. So I hope you have it with you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm done here. Um, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Please ask me questions because you might just have problem with one little tiny piece of this. Let me just fix that one little part that doesn't make sense and everything else is going to make sense for you because we're going to be doing this for the next month. So the faster that you understand this, the easier your life becomes. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. And I will be here waiting for you if you need me. Okay.